Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be an Amore Talks video. I was going to report this person, but like by, you know, to the authorities, but she told me not to yet because she didn't know if he was going to be back in the home yet. So I'm just going to tell you the story and you will see whether I, you let me know if you think I was right or wrong for not reporting them. Okay, so you gave me advice before, but this time I honestly don't know what to do because I, what I'm about to tell you is very disgusting and stomach turning. I'll try to keep it short, but I wouldn't blame you if you want to keep parts out. Keep in mind that I'm calling my dad my sperm donor because I don't respect him and I never will. Okay, so when I say sperm donor, we tell my daddy. Okay, so to start, I have a big family with over 14 brothers and sisters, but I only have four full siblings that are living with me. The other 10... Okay, daddy was uh, wrong to stop. Okay. The other 10 are spread throughout the Midwest states. I only know five of my other siblings, and they will be included in this effed up story. Okay, messed up story. So we've been homeless before. We've lived in a shelter, a woman's shelter, because my sperm donor, my dad, doesn't want to ask for help from even our grandma, our cousins, or the people that are supposed to be down for you. Um, at the time, my mom had no job, so we moved into a small house with my sperm donor, the family of three. Oh, and another family three. Okay. So as you can tell, my mom will do anything for him. That's already about to get on my nerves. Um, we just got back from the movies and my sister, well, I guess she's saying like this was the past. This is just like what literally happened. My mom, my sister called my mom downstairs to talk, which was weird because in this family, nobody talks to each other. Mm. Ooh, -wee. uh, we're all right. So basically she was telling my mom that she was pregnant with our dad's child. So after seven minutes, about seven minutes of my mom talking, she comes up crying and me and my older brother, we're just confused, like, you know, what's going on? And she just kept walking to the car. So keep in mind, my younger brothers are upstairs, not knowing what's going on, so they won't be in the story anymore. So as she went to the car, me and my older brother, we nosy, she, cause we were real nosy. So we were trying to ask my sister what's going on with our mom. And she's just sitting there saying nothing. And I said, okay, it has to do with my dad. Cause I heard her say that much. So me and my brother eventually leaves and go outside and we were just talking because we always suspected. So basically we put it together that, you know, wait, they said he didn't treat her like he treated us. He would make us starve and give her food. He would give her money for school, but give us nothing. He would take her to Chicago and buy her clothes and bring us nothing. So me and my brother started thinking, okay, we cracked the code. We did, we weren't sure because we needed more research, but we did find that not only was he allegedly raping her for six years, that she was pregnant with his kid. I immediately threw up and started crying because I was so confused. Like, my brother tried to calm me down, but I was just disgusted. So I talked to my sister to ask if she's okay. She told, she told me the story that she was 14, but he had been touching her since she was 12. She is now 20. I'm shocked, and she keeps telling me thing that she said he told if, if basically she's saying like if she told he would kill her that part I, the only part where I really believe this story was real was because when she was saying like how he treated her differently a lot of men who molest their children and stuff like that they will show favoritism to that to that child like it's sickening it's so sickening so um he would kill her and mom if she said anything so she was forced to shut up so I left because I didn't want to hear anymore that night I just kept thinking about this man that lived with us who always told us nobody cares about us and we ain't about nothing, how he hates us. He wants us to live with other his other families. To cut the story short, after about two weeks after this situation, my mom started talking to the dad again like nothing ever happened. We, when we moved into our new house, she let him come back and live with us. I don't know what to do because I don't understand why she's doing this to us. I'm literally considering just being homeless and trying to, I tried to talk to her about it, but she's saying it's not my business. And keep in mind, he used to abuse all of us. He beat, almost beat my mom to death. He's beat my brother into the hospitals two times. He once woke my sister out of her sleep and beating her and dragged her downstairs because she was texting a boy. That part made me feel like it was real too because, again, that jealous behavior, they don't want you to talk to any boys your age because he screw on. Like, that's how the color purple was. You know, he was messing with his child. So, he was one of my first bullies. He called me fat and ugly. All the time, he would throw water on me. He made me get into plank positions. He would step on my fingers. It got to the point where I thought he was the only, the only way he would be happy is if I killed myself. And when I tried to, I had to stay in a mental hospital. Lord, 
Girl, I'm ready to call the popo. When my brother was in the fifth grade. Oh, okay. When I did go to the mental hospital, he told me I was weak and stupid and would yell at me. So when my brother was in the fifth grade, he beat him to the point where my mom had to get him from school. She knows exactly what goes on and all she does is just watch. He's an evil person and he doesn't need to be in our lives, but I don't understand why she doesn't see that. What do I do if he comes back? I said she needs to call the authorities. And if she doesn't want to do it on like the site that everything's happening, what you do if you're in this situation, play it cool, go to school, and then report it. Because then you don't even have to worry about going back home to the household until he's removed and the situation is taken care of. I had to report that for one of my students. Um... It was unfortunate. I hated to have to take her from her home, but her mom didn't know that. I didn't know if her mom knew or not. She just told me that her mom's boyfriend was molesting her. And that's unacceptable. And by law, I had to report it. So, you know, I wanted to report it myself, but she's in another state. I don't know how that works, but I told her what to do. She said that she was going to wait to see if he ever came back to do it, and I didn't hear anymore from her. But this is a sick situation. I just made a video on sexual abuse. And it does happen so much in families. And it just irks me because so many people just sweep it under the rug. Like, a lot of these families know what's going on and won't say anything. Like, Precious, the movie. Like, that's just so disgusting. Even, what kind of woman, only a selfish woman who does not love anybody but herself, would allow her children to go through something like that? Like, I know plenty of women that have taken abuse themselves. But when it comes to their children, they're ready to kill for them. You know what I'm saying? So, I just feel like the mom needs to go to jail as well. I don't care how, I understand it sucks. You never want to call the police on your mom. But if they're sitting back allowing and stuff like that, I'm talking about physical abuse. That man is crazy. He would probably kill him. Like, nothing is worth their life. Like, I would never keep myself in that situation. And you shouldn't let anybody else, you know, um, tell you or shame you into being quiet. I don't care about family secrets. I don't care nothing about y'all uh, reputations. Forget family. If I'm being abused, I'm talking about it. And if you're being abused, you need to talk about it, period. And I just talk about it to get it off your chest. You even talk about it to get somebody to get this crazy person out of your life. Like, that's just disgusting. And this girl is pregnant by him. That child could come out with some sort of Down syndrome or some, some you know, situation. Like, that's so ridiculous. Like, I want to, oh, I want to fight the man so bad. Like, I hate it. There's so, so many people, people, even guys, have been inboxing me since I made my sexual abuse video, like, last week. Like, all this week. It's just crazy. Like, I'm telling y'all, even the HIV video, I made so many people. Like, I had to turn my notifications, everything off because it was kind of overwhelming. It really was. Like, all of that. I was like, you know what? Y'all, I can't take this. Like, but I, I did respond to the people. The comments are back open and everything. But it's just, you just never know who's going through. You never know. So, my advice to anybody like this, snitch. Yeah, I don't care. You better snitch. You better go to the police. You know, especially if you have irrefutable proof, you've been in mental... And, and here's my thing. The kind of part that kind of made me feel like somebody was lying in the situation, I don't know. It just was kind of crazy how, you know, if you guys have been beaten and everything like that and you've been in a mental ward, those doctors are trained to get to the bottom of it. So unless she wasn't telling them what was going on, I fought those people, like the, the professionals, for not seeing through this. Obviously, every time a child gets beat and they have bruises and stuff like that, teachers have to report that. I know some of them are trifling and they won't, especially if they're friends. I had people, I had colleague, well, colleagues that wouldn't purposely snitch on their friends because, you know, they were friends. They wouldn't, like, they wouldn't call the police on them or the, the authorities. Like, but you would let this child sit there and go through stuff like that just because that's your friend or, you know, that's a friend of family and you don't want no drama? I, I just couldn't. My conscience would kill me. I couldn't do that. I don't care who you are. If I know you're abusing somebody, you want to jail. You're going to learn a day, okay? So, I, I really don't want to sound, like, mean or disrespectful, but, like, life is precious, and you only have one. I know I know chicks that were my age that have been killed. Let me tell you, baby daddy was so crazy. He didn't want her to move on, so they were divorcing. She had a boyfriend, this Negro, and he was one of the quiet kids. He came to the girl's mom's house or auntie house or wherever, stabbed her, stabbed the boy, her boyfriend, about 10, what, 10 or 16 times, stabbed her a good 30 times, killed her, flat out killed her. Another dude around my age, and this is what we're talking like, 
five or six years ago. So we were in our early 20s. Another dude couldn't stand the fact that his baby mama wanted to leave him. Okay, so what does he do? Put them both in a car? It's, I promise you, this happened right downtown St. Louis on the east side. This man sped up, speeding, crashed his car right into the bridge, killed all of them. Crazy! Like, they, I'm telling you, these people are crazy. Another dude in St. Louis on the Palmer Bridge, dude, he shot, he shot, like, he tried to kill the girl in the car. He pulled out the gun. So she got out on the bridge because obviously there was traffic. She got out of the car on the bridge, y'all. Bumper bumper traffic started running. Do you know those people in the cars were just sitting there looking crazy? I mean, I kind of would be too because it's like, oh my God, I can't move. You know, he'll kill us. So I guess everybody was shot, but he chased her down on the bridge, shot her dead. And then I think he killed himself. But it's like, on the bridge, like, they all say, Louis is ratchet. I'm telling you, I said, Louis is kind of ratchet. Like, it is ratchet, but this just goes to show you that these men out here are going freaking nuts. When you're in an abusive situation, that's it. Like, you don't, those are the signs. You don't need Jesus to come down on the cloud to deliver you, girl. You got to get out of that situation. You have to get yourself out of that situation by any means necessary. Let me tell you something else that just really hurt my soul. One of the girls who taught me how to sew on here on YouTube, her name is Misha Lo. Misha, sweetest Christian girl I've ever come across. Do you know her baby daddy shot her dead in the head in the house, walked up into their home, and she, she was married. She was remarried or whatever with the kids in the house, shot her dead in the head. Y'all, that made me cry. It, it gave me, like, the shapes, tremors for, like, nights because she was, like, almost my age, and I couldn't believe it. I, she had moved from L.A. to San Francisco to get away from him, and I just so happened to see it on this blog where they were just saying YouTubers who passed away, and I could not believe it. I was like, she's dead? Oh, my God. Like, I was so hurt. But now her channel is back. Of course, she's, you know, deceased, but I think her husband or either her daughter is now, you know, they're keeping her legacy going. So that's a beautiful thing. You can check out her channel. I think it's Michelle TV. She had a bunch of videos. She has so many videos on here, so many channels. And it's just, it's just sad. That boy was like stalking her. And unfortunately, you know, moving away from him wasn't enough. But he was in jail. I believe she called the police before on him. And he just didn't care. Like these people, these men are crazy, y'all. You gotta get out of situations like that. Like that is no joke. It's not cute. Like, it's not, I, I hear girls bragging about, like, girl, he love me, he can't do anything without me. Girl, that's not cute. I'm mad my ex is not thinking about me. <laughs> so they say. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not pressed about it. I don't try to do stuff to tick them off, to get them to come back. And, and I don't do that. You going about your business, leave me alone, go get married. Oh, yeah, none of them are, my bad. <laughs> none of my exes are in happy relationships. Yeah, it sucks. Well, anyway, you know, it's not my fault. Anyway, but for real, though. I'm just saying, like, you just have to get yourself out of that situation and protect yourself and your children, you mothers that are putting these men before your children. And I understand that, you know, you might not have it well off, you might not have a good job or whatever, but it doesn't matter if you are broke, girl, Jesus will send you help if you do the right thing. Like, you just can't put yourself in situations just because you have a man. Like, that's nothing. That's dead. Kill that. It's not that. So... Hopefully, this video will touch somebody and will speak volumes to you. And, you know, just pay attention to your children. I'm sure that there was some signs that he was doing that. Those were the signs. He was um, picking her out of all the other kids, giving her special special privileges. Like, just watch your children, by all means. Just, you have to. Even in Memphis, like, there's, oh, it's just, I don't even want to keep talking about it because it, it just makes me upset how these men and, and even some of these crazy women kill all their kids and stuff like that. It, it's just crazy out here. So you sometimes you do have to rely on the government to mediate and take children out of homes and put them in better places. You know, some foster parents are really cool, really nice and loving. So don't be afraid to go somewhere else, you know, or stay with another relative out of state or whatever. Do what you have to do. So that's pretty much it. Comment below what you think, you know, would be the best situation or signs of, you know, abuse or whatever, or your situations that you've experienced with some others or yourself. And make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you check out my previous More Talks videos and my personal story times. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys in the next video.